Today I'm going to show you how to use Vectory to create your own custom 3D objects to be used with 3JS. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my 3D tutorial, but you could watch all of these 3D courses at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCetro.com. So today we're going to be covering both Vectory and also 3JS. Now separately throughout the different videos of this channel, recently I've covered both of these things independently of each other, but I decided to be cool uh, in the cases where you would want to be able to create your own 3D objects, but also be able to use them on the web using 3JS to uh, like perhaps your user interface projects. Uh, you want to be able to use them in the browser and animate them. I thought it'd be cool to go ahead and cover that workflow as it's done. Now, I would also recommend if you haven't touched either of these things uh, to check out my previous videos where I kind of do a real quick crack, crash course on both of them. All right, so just to show you again what we're going to do, I. Uh, I'm going to refresh this. We have an intro, interesting animation that kind of con, kind of loads up. It's kind of like a loading graphic. And we're going to create all of this from scratch. First, the 3D objects, and then we're going to import them using 3JS. All right, so let's get started. All right, so here I am at Vectory.com within my account. And the first thing we're going to do is under primitives, um, where we can just create a bunch of simple shapes. We're going to first have... Um, I like seeing a shadow. Um, we're not necessarily going to see this once it's in 3JS in the browser, but I like putting a shadow plane anyhow. And we really don't have to, to do any modifications to it. We'll just leave it as is. Um, next, we'll go ahead and we're going to add for our centerpiece, just to keep things real simple, although it's a cool shape, is a polyhedron or polyhedron or whatever. Um, under subdivisions over here in the properties panel, we're going to put zero for subdivisions. There you go. And so we have this cool, interesting little shape here. You can left click, by the way, to uh, rotate the camera view. You can also zoom up with your scroll wheel, hold space bar, left click and drag to pan. All right. So um, for this, we're not going to mess with materials just yet. Um, I want to add the sort of um, the glass panels that will go around this. So we'll choose a box. All right, and so we have these options here um, to make adjustments to the scale and position and such. These little boxes, um, if we come here to the inner side or the outer box right here, we can make it real thin, kind of like a glass panel of sorts. And we'll just position it right around there. Um, I wanna take this and we're gonna scale it down. So we'll choose the inner option to scale this down a fair amount. I think if we come to like a side view right here, position it right near the center. And also I do want to make this less like a square. So um, we'll go ahead and take the outer. So it's more like a panel. All right, that's pretty good right there. All right, so what's really cool uh, about this, um, instead of just replicate and duplicating this with Control D and trying to position it around there, it's a much easier way. And we can come over here, hover over the Generate option, and we could do Array Radial. Look at that. All right, very cool. So um, there are properties that we can adjust here on the side. So um, we have a count five. I like five by default already. Um, you can experiment with these other settings, like for instance, radius was at 100, but 54, it gets it closer together. So I kind of like that. In fact, I'm like, I'm happy with everything as is. So there's no other adjustments I'm going to make. I wanted the, the modeling part to be quicker. Vectory is much more capable of allowing you to create um, custom objects and just you can do so much is very cool I'm going to do another tutorial in the future um, just about the modeling aspect once I myself become better at that part um, so now we'll worry about uh, textures because we can 
export the textures as, or the materials as well, uh, as well as the 3D objects. Uh, the materials are as, as MTL files that 3JS can use as well. So um, let's come over here to library. And over here is the materials tab. And now we can apply materials to this. So let's focus on our polyhedron sort of interesting shape first. And we could just, uh, maybe if we want this to be a little bit more metallic. I think I like that. Um, and we can go back here to object, for instance, and um, for our material, we have more options down here where we can change. Let me make sure that you guys can see this. I, I wanna make sure I'm not over the important stuff. So uh, like roughness, metalness, reflectivity, um, you can in really increase all of these or just play around based on how you want this thing to look and react. I think I'll leave mine right there. All right, now when it comes to glass though, um, let's go back to library. We could type in glass here and you have like four textures they give you hit enter um, or materials rather. So if we choose glass, it's not gonna work because this is a um, group. So I'm gonna select, oh, first what we're gonna do, I forgot about this part. We're gonna come back here and convert to geometry. All right, so now we have all of our baked materials in here. Before, uh, it's kind of like the same thing like Photoshop, for instance, if you have a, um, a smart object layer, you can't make certain uh, changes to it. So you're basically like rasterizing it. This is the same thing here. Um, so what we'll do here is once we have them all, we can now, uh, let's go over to our library tab once again, and I'll double click into the group to select each one. So hold shift while doing that and then apply the glass material. All right. So by the way, if you want to see kind of what this looks like, um, you go to the render and you can choose like uh, medium, for instance. There you go. It's not going to look like that in the browser, um, although it'll look um, you can get it to look pretty close. Uh, so when it comes to 3JS and glass, it's not going to have certain um, uh, characteristics as it does in vectory. So one thing that we definitely will need to do is to create um, the transparency of glass within 3JS, we need to change the opacity. So we come down maybe to like 30%. All right, and trust me, uh, because I, I did experiment with this, this will work better for you um, when it comes to the part where you get it into 3JS. Otherwise, you won't be able to see behind the glass panels if you have that um, opacity up at 100%. So um, you could experiment with the other values here um, if you wish, but right now I'm pretty cool with this right here. Okay, so now at this point, uh, we can come under here under export. And you can see, and by the way, you need to have the full option of Vectory. Um, I, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, um, uh, in order to gain access for the ability to export your objects here. Um, one thing I was unsure of and I couldn't find uh, is if it would export you know, all of your objects um, as separate objects. What I found is if I tried to export this as is, it would export both this and this in the same object file. Um, and I needed them to be two separate object files. Also, before you export this polyhedron, you wanna make sure to con click Convert to Geometry under the Object tab with it selected. And I'll give it a color right around here. That looks good to me. And then we can go ahead and export the object. So what I decided to do is um, first, I just delete this, hit this, and choose texture size, original size, texture quality 100%, download object, it'll download a zip, all right? Um, then undo, which is control Z, and then just reverse that. So, um, sorry, we'll take uh, this and then just hit download object once again. Now we have our materials and objects specific to each of the two um, models that we have that we want to use or there are our, our objects essentially. So now it's just a matter of uh, opening these up and we're going to place them into a new folder for our project. 
All right, and you can see uh, this is the first uh, zip file that we download, which which is just the polyhedron, the, cent the central uh, shape that we had. I'm going to drag it over to a new folder here called Vectory3.js, and you just want to rename these. Um, we'll call this, uh, what will we call this? We'll call this, I'll call it center, as in the centerpiece. So these are just the uh, material file and the object file for that polyhedron. Um, so then we'll do the same thing here um, with our other, get out of here, and we will rename this. We'll call this glass, I guess, make it obvious. All right, awesome. So let's exit out of here. And now we're done here with uh, Vectory, and now we'll go ahead and load up uh, your code editor, which I'm using Visual Studio Code, which is a free code editor from Microsoft. And we'll go ahead and open up a folder. Our, here we go, our vectory 3 js file. All right, or folder rather. So let's create a new file called index.html. Um, hit exclamation point enter for a quick boilerplate right there. Uh, we'll link up a real quick CSS file, although it's gonna be very minimal main um, let's put it in a folder css main.css i'm not even going to use sass as well I'm just going to get this going as fast as possible a new folder with main.css inside of it and i'm only going to paste in um the rule sets and <laughs> there's only a couple of them really this is it so we're setting the body with the um, default margin of zero the height 100, 100 uh, viewport height and the canvas is just display block we'll save it and then we'll go ahead and we're going to import all of the necessary JavaScript files uh, for this to work. We're just going to use CDNs and also uh, straight up JavaScript files for a couple of the other things, which I'll describe to you in a second. So for the CDN here, I'm going to hit Control V to get rid of the sidebar just momentarily. Um, this is for 3JS. If you just go to type in 3JS CDN in Google, you'll find this link right here. Otherwise, just pause and, and type it out. Um, and then also, we're gonna uh, use TweenMax, which is from Green, uh, GSAP, which is a green, uh, green sock animation platform. I've done a bunch of videos on it. It's a really powerful uh, JavaScript-based animation library for your web projects, uh, and it's very cool. So do a channel search if you wanna learn about it. I do have like a crash course on, um, on several of the GSAP topics. So this is the CDN for that. So here in the middle, we're gonna to have to have two other JavaScript files that aren't included in the CDN for 3JS. They're the object loader and the material loader. And we have obviously two of those uh, that we wanna use. Um, so uh, we probably could have used C uh, an, 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 an NPM install with this in order to gain quick access through node modules, but I, I'm just gonna, I'm kind of lazy. So um, right here, uh, we have the, uh, the loader section for 3JS. And I'm just going to grab the code. So um, let's see. We're, we want the object loader. Um, where are we at? Okay, right here. OBJ loader. Dot JS. If I just choose raw, I'm just going to copy that here. We'll create a new file. No, nope, let's put this in a JavaScript folder just for now. So we'll just put in. Um, we'll call this OBJ. Um, dot JS. Paste that in. And then one more time, we'll come back and we'll find our, um, yeah, and we will find our material loader. It's mtlloader.js, there we go. So we'll just name this as MTL. All right, save it. And then we reference both of those and we'll put in our script source equals, uh, what was that, JS and obj.js, shift alt and down arrow key, and then this is what, mtl.js, awesome. Okay, so now we have everything ready to rock. So let's put script here, and we'll just write our JavaScript in our HTML file. All right, so 
When it comes to using 3.js to set up your scene, there's a lot of boilerplate code. Now, I did kind of like a crash course introduction to 3.js just recently. You can uh, search my channel for that. Just type in 3.js, you'll find it. Uh, if I can't remember to link it in the description. And I, I do a much better job of explaining what exactly is happening with the following code, all right? And this is code, if you want like a full screen canvas, um, it, it's gonna be pretty much all the same settings um, with some exceptions uh, for almost every project that you have. So a lot of this is not specific to the purpose of this tutorial, which is you know learning how to import your objects and materials from 3JS. Um, but I'm gonna describe it very quickly. So I, off the other screen, my other monitor, I have this code already set up with some comments. So we're first gonna create the 3JS scene, very basic, you do that for every 3JS project. We're also gonna create a camera. You have to have a camera in every 3JS project. There are different cameras. Uh, we're gonna use a perspective camera. You can use like an orthographic camera, which uh, you can set up to be kind of like an isometric view if you wish. Uh, we're setting the camera position Z at 25. So if you make this zero, things are gonna be up a lot closer to you, your 3D objects. And you could experiment with all those settings as well. Next, we're going to create a, uh, uh, a renderer. You also need a renderer with every 3GS project. So this is a full screen WebGL renderer. Um, we can set the, the background color. This is real important. All these Ds, uh, the hex color code is just like a, a gray, a light gray color. So you can make it black, the background, anything right here. Um, we're setting the renderer size to the, the, the actual browser or the device uh, inner height and inner width. And it makes it full screen and then we append it. After that, uh, we're going to copy this following code. By the way, this is all gonna be on the GitHub repo, so you can just copy and follow along. Um, you wanna make sure the project's responsive based on window resizing. So when a user resizes the browser window, uh, for instance, if you don't have some of this code here, then, or this, this, this add event listener for resize, then um, the objects in your 3D scene are gonna get thrown off. So this just fixes that. Um, Next, we need to add a light, very basic 3JS stuff. And there's a bunch of different types of lights, so we're just using a point light. These are some of the various settings. You could change the color of the light, which will change the color of your objects. Um, and just using plain white is, is um, what you're gonna wanna use most of the time. And then we just set the position of the light and then we add it to the scene. Um, after that, we're gonna define a couple variables just for our two mo our, our objects, essentially. And then we're going to create the material. So we first import the material, then we add the object to the material. So this right here, this MTL loader comes from that MTL JS file that we imported up here. So we create a new instance of it called MTL loader. We load, I, this is gonna have to change. I changed that to, to something else. So we change this here to the glass material. Um, so we'll, we'll add that first and then we call materials.preload and then we have to next load the actual object. All right, so the next bit of code will help us do that. All right, and right here, let's just close this off. All right, uh, so what's happening here is we have uh, our object loader. So we create a new instance of the object loader coming from our OBJ JS file. And then we set the materials uh, to this object that we then load and we name this one glass.object. So this is the material for the glass uh, object and here's the object itself. And then we simply add it to the scene. And in a bit, we will change this uh, so that it, one second, there we go. Uh, so that it uh, will rotate it in position it appropriately, appropriately in the scene. Um, for at this point with the, this amount of code, let's go ahead and uh, make sure everything works so far. So, um, oh, before we get to that part, there's a little bit more we have to actually call a couple other things here before we get to that point. Um, and that is this bit of code. So we can see we have uh, a renderer, request animation frame. I uh, One thing I'm going to do is comment those out and we have to call this to add everything uh, to make sure everything will work. So now let's um, hit control B um, and if you right click and open with live server or you see this go live button, if you don't see that, it's an extension, just type in live server in the extensions panel and it, 
this is the one that you want to install. It'll install it and then you just have to reload, click reload and it'll load your project right back up. And then you have access to that option. So just a quick dev server basically. You can see that we don't see anything and that's because we have to uh, position this object uh, so that we can actually see it based on this value right here, um, the camera position and such. So I'm gonna paste in this. Um, this is gonna set this object, which is the glass um, object that we created, uh, the position.z, which is the depth, um, to 370, uh, to, to minus 370, you can see how we added that here. And object rotation, I'm also rotating the X here as well. So um, if we save that, this should update and we can now see it um, in the center. All right, great. So now all we have to do here is in this next section, all right, so we're just gonna copy from, let's see here, right here, and then paste. All right, so I, we're gonna change this glass here to center.mtl and obj right, that, right there like that. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and save that. And here we go. All right, so I had to make an adjustment too um, that wasn't recorded um, with the position um, of this particular one. Uh, it, it was showing up too small at 370, so I changed it. Um, so now with this, if we want this to animate, um, we can do that in several different ways. So the first way is we can um, come down here where we had this these two lines commented out. So our object, in our object two, um, we can set the Z position, or you could do Y or X, depending on which direction you want to, to rotate, um, to keep on adding 0 0.01. Um, if you want things to run faster, um, to spin faster, we can choose uh, a, a higher value for this. So if you save it, we can now see, oh, by the way, before we get to this part, we actually have to define this our object in our object two right down here. So. Um, right here is where we want to set um, our object two is gonna be equal to object, which we're getting this from here. And then up here as well, this is our object. It's just equal to object right here. So we'll save that. And we can now see they are both spinning. Very, very, very cool. All right, so um, what about having like a more interesting animation sequence? Perhaps, you know, they scale up or do whatever you want. Um, well, we can use or over here our tween max. All right, so to do that, we're going to put in our second object where it's created. Uh, we'll put it right here, and we create a new t instance of the timeline max right here. Uh, and then I'll show you one of these. We can say this.tl. And well, you can use either the to method or the from method, and it does affect how the animation um, takes place. We'll just say it's going to come, it's going to animate, animate from these values to its original values based, you know, before adding any animation at all. So what we'll do is we'll say our object, actually, I'm in the wrong one. Let's uh, copy this over here. There we go. The second, yeah, there we go. So we'll say our object uh, two. Probably could, could have chose a better variable name for that. Dot scale. So if we want to scale it, we add dot scale here. And then for the duration, we'll say two seconds. And then we put in an array of values that we want to end up scaling. So we can say uh, Y, we'll say zero, X, zero, and Z, we'll say zero. And then we can add an, add an ease. So we'll say expo dot ease out. And you can check out the uh, the timeline, the GSAP timeline max um, easing documentation, and it has a, uh, a lot of other values that you can choose for this. So uh, if we save it, and refresh, we will see that it scales from zero. All right. So um, for this next part, I'm going to simply just paste in three more from commands right here. So we're animating our first is the, the centerpiece and then our polyhedron and then also the glass object right here. Uh, you can see you can um, animate the position. You can animate other things as well. Um, we're, we're just doing scale and position of both of these items. Notice over here we have another parameter um, that has um, 
minus equals two. This, this is basically a, you can control an offset. Um, if you don't add this, these are all going to wait for each other to animate. So two seconds here, two seconds here. Um, but if you want them these animations to occur with each other um, or, or in parallel, you can add this as well. You can also add a plus to make it even have a longer delay than the, the default. So let's go ahead and refresh this. All right. So as you can see, the glass, um, the glass panels right here, we can say uh, at the Z axis, we put the zero. Um, so that's why that's kind of, you can see it briefly at the bottom right here. It's kind of white. And then we, um, it's going from that value then to its original value. So that's how that works. Take a look one more time. All right, very cool. Oh, and by the way, if you notice this little strange thing right there, it's not a flat face. I was screwing around um, with the manipulations in uh, Vectory just for the, for the fun of it. But anyhow, yeah, that is it. All right, so hopefully you found that interesting. You learned a lot. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.